Welcome to the Chaska Fort Department. Uh, we're so sorry that we can't meet in person this year, but we wanted to do a short video to show you some fire prevention stuff that you would have seen uh, if you would have came to the station. So come on into the fire station. Here in the background, we have some of our firefighters that were, would be here teaching you some firefighter safety. Um, so we'll try to do this in a video. So as you come into our fire station, this is Chaska's only fire station in the city. We only have one. And here we have some old trucks as you come in. And Firefighter Bonama is going to show you them in, later on. So keep coming on, on in. Hello. Glad you came to see us. My name's Fire Inspector Al. And uh, we're gonna, I'm going to take you on a uh, little tour of the station. So you can see here is where my cube is. This is where I do all of my work uh, with the uh, rental inspections. Next to me over here, we have Sarah, our office administrator and firefighter. Hi. Next to her, down here, we have our other fire inspector and Captain Zach. Hey kids. So this is our general area where we uh, conduct all of our regular business. As we come out the door, here is the offices of our assistant chiefs. Down the hall a little bit more. In here we have the office of our fire chief. Then we have a conference room, and that's where uh, Firefighter Morrissey is working. Hello. And then straight ahead here, we have Fire Marshal's office. So oh, as we can head on through, in here is our main training room. We do a lot of our uh, meetings in here before we go out and uh, do some of our practice stuff. So, as we come on out, you'll see all the pictures on my left. So here, the first ones that we see are all of the active firefighters that we have currently. Next to them, we have all of our retired firefighters and they go back, these pictures go back to 1923. And then you'll see on this wall, we have all of the retired that will go all the way back to 1882. So the fire station has been around for a long time. Not this one, but the fire department has been around a while. Now, when you think about a fire station, everybody thinks about the fire pole. Well, we do have one of those. So, as you can see, it goes all the way up. We don't actively use this because currently we are uh, paid on call department. So we don't sleep here at night. We respond from our homes and come here. So down this hall is a list, or our pictures of all of our older engines. This is the one that we currently run. This is our second engine that we run. And then from there down, we have our two previous engines, and you'll see some of the other engines. All right, should we head upstairs real quick? So upstairs here is we have kind of a, a, a quiet little area for us. Um, when we're working duty crews and stuff, we typically have some time down where we're not always running calls or we're not always doing some training or something. So we can come up here. As you can see, we can shoot a little pool. 
We have a nice big couch there. We have a nice big TV. We can watch movies. We haven't uh, come fully up to speed yet. We still have the Xbox, but you know, we can play games. We have another uh, kitchen up here, a little uh, smaller. Doesn't have quite the uh, amenities that we have downstairs, but. Then on down here, To help keep us in shape, we have all of our workout equipment. So this is some place where we can uh, come along and uh, get our workouts taken care of. Right out here on the balcony, we have the old bell. And this bell used to be rung, and that's how we would call the fire firefighters to the fire station if they if we had a fire or something so currently we use a pager and this will go off and this will beep and it will tell us that we need to come to the station back in the old days they would have somebody that would show up and they would ring that bell and that way the firefighters from around the uh, city would know to come to the fire station This door is where we have our, our truck apparatus space. So this is where we're going to park all of our trucks. On this side we park all of the big trucks. And on the other side, over here, is where we park a lot of our smaller trucks. So this is where we'll have the regular pickup trucks. We'll have our uh, ATV. We'll have our grass fire pickup truck. Then on over here, in this room here, you can see a bunch of hose that's hanging up. This is where we hang the hose out to dry after we've used it. So it's a great big tower, and all we do is hang it up there, and when it's dry, then we uh, pull it down and we can roll it up, like you see on the wall there. If we come back this way, on this other corner of the apparatus bay, this is where we have some of our uh, props that we can use for our various trainings. So the wall here is set up for a search and rescue. The wall back there is set up if you need to uh, crawl out of a window. You can practice that as well. And then the big blue door up here is where we can practice our what we call forcible entry. So that is, if the doors are all locked and we need to get in, we need to practice how we can get into the door. And that's where we practice that. All right, and we've got one more place. We'll come over here to where we store all of our gear. Down this hallway, you're going to see all of our lockers with all of our gear in it. You'll see that it's all ready to be put on so that when we, uh, when the pager goes off and we uh, show up at the station, we'll uh, come here, we'll put our gear on quick, and then we'll head out to the truck. So yeah, if you notice, as we're looking through, everybody's got their own name on it. That's their gear. That's their locker. Um, most of them have their pictures up, up above it. Uh, the newer people that have just joined, we haven't taken their pictures yet. So those are the ones that uh, don't quite have the pictures up above them yet. 
But this is where they would keep all of their stuff, kind of like their own little locker room or locker at home. So here on our screen here is kind of some information. You'll see that uh, it lists the people that are going to be working today or tonight on our duty crews. We also have a radio that we can talk to dispatch with, communicate back and forth. Um, we'll have an iPad. We can look up addresses if we need to. When we get our active 911, it will pull us up. Um, and it will give us directions on how to get to the, the house that we're going to if we need it. So as we come through this door, you can see we have a sign up here. It says no fire gear. So that means that we can't wear our regular fire outfits, our bunker gear beyond this point. We have to keep it all out here. And part of the reason we do that is to try and keep some of the, uh, the harmful smoke and stuff out of the area in here. Hey, it sounds like there's a little noise going on in the kitchen. Let's go see what's going on. Oh, look, Hi. it's Firefighter Anderson. How's everyone doing? Today we're gonna talk about serving up fire safety in the kitchen. Come on in. I want you to take a look around and take a minute to kind of see if there's any fire hazards that you can point out to your teacher that should be changed and then we'll kind of go through it. Okay, so we'll start over by the sink. You never want to have a cord going into the sink because you could get electrocuted. So you always want to make sure to not have any cords by the sink. Another thing, don't put any metal in a toaster. And when you're done using it, unplug it. Looking at the stove top, Stove tops can get really hot, so you don't want to have anything on it that could start on fire. You don't want to have this melt because that could cause a fire. And handles, you always want to have the handles turned in because if you have it turned out, you could walk by it and it could go on the floor and it could burn. And you might have noticed in the microwave that we have a pot in the microwave. You don't want to have these in there because when you turn the microwave on, it'll create sparks and a potential fire. So make sure not to have that in there. If you do need to reheat something, use a microwave safe bowl. Put your food in there. And then start your microwave. And when it's going to be done, your food may be really hot and the microwave safe bowl. So put on some safety mitts and take your stuff out so you don't burn yourself. And if you accidentally forget to do this step and you do burn yourself, run your hands under cold water and tell your parents. Thanks for coming and helping make our kitchen safe. Do you know that, what that noise is? Oh, Zach. Hey kids, did you all hear that a smoke detector rolling off? So these little things in your house can help save your life. So a couple little fun facts that you and your parents can do at home to stay safe. Every month, you gotta go around and test every one of your smoke detectors. So you find your smoke detector, push that little button, and it beeps, that means it's working. Another thing that you need to remind your parents of is every time we switch the clocks over twice a year, you need to take your smoke detectors down and change your battery. What that does is make sure it always has power to it, so it's always going to be working to keep you safe. So now let's talk about if we're in our bedroom, right, and we need to get out. You just heard the smoke detector, it's sounding. It's nighttime, I crawl to my door, right, the smoke detector's going off, so there might be smoke. I get down low, I sit at the bottom of the door with the back of my hand, and I feel it for heat. If I don't feel heat, I can go out that way, but, ah, there's heat on the door. I need a second way out. So my first way is blocked, I go to my second way, I come out here, same thing, 
I feel my door, there's no heat. And now I'm outside. Once I'm outside, I stay outside. Now if you're on second floor and you can't get out because your first exit's blocked, Sarah's gonna show us what you should be doing if you're on second floor and you can't get out. So that lets us know when we get on scene, we, now we know where to go to help you. So now let's talk about, we get outside, we're at our family's meeting point, right? We're outside, I gotta call 911. There's some things you need to remember when you call 911. Your name, your address, what type of emergency, and a phone number they can call you back on. So if I call 911, 911, what is your emergency? Hi, I have a fire. Can I get your name, please? My name is Zach Bonima. Phone number? My phone number is 952-448-2990. And your address? My address is 285 Angler Boulevard. Okay, thank you, Zachary. We're sending someone to help. Please stay on the line until police or fire arrive. Awesome, we will wait outside until you guys get here. You guys, we got a fire, we gotta go! Firefighter Les McBurney. I don't like fire. But I'm going to show you some of our old fire trucks because to, to me it's still 1920s. This is what we bring to fires. Usually we hook it up to horses, but the horses are out in pasture right now. They're eating. So this is one of our original pumpers, and we can have water up in this tank, and then the engine back here runs the tank or the pump put the fire out. These are some of my favorite trucks that we have nowadays. This is a 1926 Studebaker pumper. It's got a nice comfy seat for me to ride in, a windshield, a siren, and lights. This is actually our first motorized pumper, so that's why we let our horses out in pasture to eat. Because now that we got an engine, we can just drive it a little faster. Then our newest engine that we have, this is a 1934 Chevy pump. Same setup, it's got a little bigger pump in it, some more hose, still got my seat, still motorized, I can still drive the fires. But well, now, if you guys are more interested in some of the, these bigger trucks and better trucks that you guys have nowadays, let's snap to the future. Hey kids. I'm Les McBurney III. I heard you talk to my grandpa. He showed you his gear and his old trucks. Now let's talk about some new trucks. This is our engine 11. This is the truck that goes to every single fire call. It's got a thousand gallons of water. That's like a thousand bathtubs. It can also pump 1,500 gallons a minute. That's a lot of water. It's got hose, 
It's got air tanks so we can breathe when we're in a fire. It's got any kind of tool you could ever think of is on this truck. Now if we walk over here, this is our ladder truck. It's got a 100 foot ladder. We can get 100 feet in the air. It also has a pump and also has water. But its main job is to get us up high so we can fight bigger fires. We can get up on roofs, we can help people in high places. Then we got our third engine over here. This is our backup engine, this is our third truck out. It also has water, hose, and all the same tools that truck has. So if that truck is out on a call, we can do the same thing with this truck. Now let's talk about our gear, right? This is what we call our bunker gear. I got my bunker pants, I got boots, they got steel toes on them, so my toes don't get hurt. I got my own coat. This all protects me from fire. Then we have the only thing that me and my grandpa have in common is we both wear leather helmets. Well, this is our fire helmet. This protects us from water going down our backs, from something hitting our heads. This is one of the biggest safety pieces we can wear. We really look forward to seeing you guys next year when everybody can come to the fire station and during fire prevention week. So, see you later.